Tony Dalman. Birthday wishes from Saddam. Hmm? <laughs> oh, birthday wishes from Saddam. <laughs> Tony Dalman. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. One day, I was walking out of Justin's Cafe, the bar in the Navy Yard neighborhood of Washington, D.C., with my cousin Beth and her husband Dan. Uh, we were in a pretty good mood because our trivia team, the team Happy Birthday Tony, had just won the trivia contest that night. My normal birthday date to my wife Carla was overseas at the time, so Beth and Dan offered to take me out for their trivia night because that's just the way our family is. All of a sudden, I felt a buzz in my pocket. I pulled out the phone, saw the phone number, and I go, oh, that must be Saddam. Dan had a really confused look on his face. I attempted to explain. Well, every year, Saddam Hussein calls me on my birthday. The look on Dan's face matched the looks on the faces of everybody in this room. I should probably do a little bit of explaining. My grandpa and grandma had nine kids. And out of those nine kids, including my father, five of them lived within a four mile radius of the farm where I grew up. Grew up. So that means that the young Tony Dolman had a lot of support from his aunts and uncles. My uncle Mark, the only one of the nine kids to not get married and have kids on his own, made up for it by heaping lots of attention and praise on all of his nieces and nephews. But Uncle Mark also told us quite a few stories. Like one of the stories was about Hatchet Harry, an old man who lived on the north side of one of our cornfields, who would roam around his property with his namesake weapon, looking for trespassers. <laughs> There was also the story when my dolman nearsightedness brought me to the eye doctor. And Uncle Mark told me that in order for the eye doctor to look at the back of your eye, they actually have to pull your eyeball, eyeballs out of your skull. And to make sure you get your own eyeballs back, because there would be nothing worse than coming home with girl eyes. <laughs> but sometimes the stories were a little bit more international in nature. In 1991, when the entire country was enamored with the Persian Gulf War in Iraq, my Uncle Mark told me that the United States and Iraq had come to a peace deal. In exchange for disarmament and the return of Kuwait, President George H.W. Bush agreed to give the date March 13th to the country of Iraq. Now, never mind the problems with an international transfer of a calendar date, I was more concerned because March 13th is my birthday, <laughs> and there is nothing more valuable to a seven-year-old boy than his birthday. As the date came along, the calendar seemingly did not change, but I was still a little bit nervous. On my seventh birthday, I received a phone call, and my parents told me it was for me, and much to my surprise, it was Saddam Hussein himself. <laughs> or at least what a seven-year-old boy from central Minnesota would think Saddam Hussein would sound like. To this day, I have no idea what an Iraqi accent sounds like, but it probably wasn't the half-Italian, half-Scandinavian voice that came over the phone that day. Hello, Antonio! Saddam Hussein said that he was going to take good care of my birthday, and he wished me a happy year. These phone calls would continue on my birthday every year after that. They continued through middle school. They continued through high school. They even continued long after everybody had caller ID. And I knew that the phone number coming that was making this call was from a central Minnesota 320 area code. These phone calls even continued after Saddam Hussein was captured by American forces in an Iraqi foxhole in 2003. These phone calls continued after I went to college. The, but I clearly remember the day. It was December 29, 2006. Rumors were circulating that the Iraqis had formed a court to try Saddam Hussein for war crimes. Pretty soon, the rumors came back to the United States. Saddam Hussein was declared guilty of crimes against humanity, 
and within a few hours, pictures of Saddam being hung had been leaked to, to the American media. Saddam Hussein was dead. But come along to March 13th, 2007, I receive a phone call. <laughs> Hello, this is Special Agent Jones. Is this Anthony Dahlman? Yes, this is him. Mr. Dahlman, I have a phone call for you from an undisclosed location from an S. Hussein. Do you accept the call? <laughs> of course I accept the call. <laughs> Hello, Antonio! <laughs> Saddam, I'm really surprised to be hearing from you. It's, uh, how are you doing? It's like, oh, my dearest Antonio, you are my one and only dear friend. I would not miss your birthday. Like, well, Saddam, I, I really did not expect to be hearing from you this year. Uh, where are you? Oh, Antonio, I am on a secret island with Jimmy Hoffa and Jack Kennedy, <laughs> but I could not miss your birthday. It's like, oh, Saddam, it's, it's, it's really great to hear from you. It's, I, I just hope you're doing all right. Oh, Antonio, I would not miss your birthday. You are my one and only dear only friend, but I shouldn't be giving you too much information. This is Special Agent Jones. Your time has expired. This transmission is now terminated. Oh. <laughs> so I was standing outside of Justin's cafe, attempting to explain to Dan that a former Iraqi dictator was calling me every year on my birthday. But all of the only response that I could get from Dan is that is really weird. <laughs> Fortunately, I had my cousin Beth on my side, who was well aware of the antics of my aunts and uncles. She said, well, that's just the way our family is. On that day, it was probably the first time I realized this was really weird. Saddam Hussein was responsible for the deaths of tens of thousands of Kurdish citizens inside the Iraqi borders. He invaded a neighboring country and yet, for the better part of a quarter century, my Uncle Mark pretended to be him to, to call and wish me a happy birthday. Mm. But on that same day, what I realized what wasn't weird was the kindness and affection that my Uncle Mark gave me. He had always been kind to our niece and nephews, coming to all my football games, taking us out for pizza. The affection that he has given me has made me the person I am today. But probably greatest of all, the stories that he has told me are stories that I am going to be able to tell for the rest of my life. Because that's just the way our family is. Mr. Toastmaster of the Day.